sitting on the bench. Okay, return. Hideyoshi's claim that advertising doubled the taste was apparently right. After being chased out to the guest house, the kids and Nanjo had gathered in the cousin room and were eating the cake that Kumasawa had brought for dessert. It was both wonderful and high class, topped with lavish amounts of cream and del decorated deliciously with fruits. But delicious as it was, it didn't taste quite as good for some reason. <laughs> Without Goto-san selling it, it isn't nearly as good. And if we ask Kumasawa to sell it, she'd just say it's made of mackerel. I would. Who? Really? You can make cake from mackerel? I guess you could say it's kind of fishy. <laughs> Absolutely! And as you can see with this very cake, if you mix the squeezed juice of mackerel with flour and eggs before cooking, it comes out all fluffy. Oh! <laughs> That'd be incredible if true. <laughs> it is! Maybe mackerel cake will show up on the next menu of one of Father's restaurants. Hell no! <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Frosties. I laugh. Oh, you did? You guys, but okay. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> guess that works. I <laughs> laugh. <laughs> After all, mackerel's full of nutrients and sounds healthy. It might be really popular with women and the elderly. Because I'm like that. <laughs> I'm both of those things. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not going to get anywhere near it. Girls don't eat something that weird. Even the elderly would wish to decline. <laughs> well, I'm both of those things, and I beg to disagree. Oh, <laughs> but it's delicious, you know? Kumasawa was really cheering up the mood with her classic mackerel jokes. <laughs> classic, classic Kumasawa. Classic. But the sound of the downpouring rain kept turning their attention towards the mystery guest. In the end, they show showered Maria with questions again since she was the only person here to have met Beatrice. I can't believe she actually she's actually was telling the truth. To make it sound like though you've never believed it, this Maria meets a witch business isn't news to you. Yeah. I thought it was just one of those fairy tales you'd expect from a dreamy kid that age. She exists. Beatrice <coughs> exists. Every year when we come to the family conference, I meet her and we play together. That's right. Although Beatrice Sama usual, doesn't usually show herself, I hear she sometimes unexpectedly appears before honest people with clean hearts. <laughs> Beatrice referred to that character in the fairy tale about the Rokenjima witch. To keep Kinzo in a good mood, the family and servants acted as though they believed in the witch of his delusions. That's how Rokenjima's fairy tale, or maybe ghost story, had come into being. To the family members who knew that backstory, the fairy tale of the Golden Witch wasn't something to be taken too seriously. However, they were never able to say that out loud in front of Kinzo. Because of that, the legend of the witch carried a lot more weight to someone like young Maria, who didn't know the story of how it had come into being. That's why Maria believed in the legend of the witch. She accepted it entirely. That was the only natural for an imaginative girl who believed in witches. So people had avoided saying things that would betray her dream. On the contrary, they had worked together to say and do things that would help liven up her dreams without her knowing. So when Maria-chan was showing us the candy that supposedly came from Beatrice, I figured someone subtly slipped it into her handbag. I have done similar things a few times in the past. Secretly placing sweets somewhere. I imagine even Kumasawa-san, or rather all of the servants and everyone in the Ushiromiya family has done it once or twice. So if it'll make a small innocent kid happy, you might place a sweet somewhere and have everyone join in on keeping the secret alive for her. Come to think of it, I'll bet you do that kind of thing all the time, George Oh God, who knows? What? It'd probably be boorish to admit to such a thing out loud, I guess. He doesn't want to admit that he like hides candy so we know when he sees me. <laughs> George admitted it while being extremely wary that Maria didn't find out. In other words, it's kind of like a hope. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to tell her Santa doesn't <laughs> exist <either? laughs> In other Damn. words, it's kind of like Santa Claus. To protect a kid's dreams, the parents plot together and lie. Setting the president. Maria's about to have a fucking meltdown. Is Maria earshot of this? I would assume so. 
I would, I don't, I'm guessing not. Sending presents at its bedside of a child fast asleep. After all, you want to protect the kid's dreams, right? Or Rosa just already crushed those dreams for her. <laughs> Obviously, I've known Santa Crush. doesn't exist for a long time now. But if there's no reason to wake up from a dream like that, I wish I could have believed it all my life. Because adults know that world is filled with terrible things. Okay. They all want to at least protect the pure dreams of a child. Ooh! Ooh. Oh, it just exists! Oh, she is here! What? <laughs> I guess she already knows Santa doesn't exist! Yes, she, she does. Beatrice-sama does exist, right? Some time ago, when I was drying mackerel to make some black tea, suddenly... <laughs> well, it basically goes something like that. Supposedly, at least. So, simply put, this was supposed to be a witch that no one but Maria believed in. And Kingsville. I wouldn't phrase it quite like that. The point isn't that we didn't believe. We were all trying to give her a chance to believe, like Santa. So this is not about not betraying a child's innocence. But Santa doesn't exist in reality. If you don't want kids to be all disappointed when they learn the truth, you're better off not showing them that dream in the first place. God, at least no one's told her about the tooth fairy yet. Is the fact that I think like this proof that I'm still a long way from becoming a full adult? The true nature of Rokenjima's witch was finally starting to take shape in battle in mind. Go ahead then, sir. However, their current situation overrode this understanding. And in fact, it completely overturned its very premise. So, we thought we knew what was going on, but now Beatrice, someone, the witch, has actually appeared in reality. Is that it? And judging by how freaked out our parents were, it looks like she wasn't an invited guest. Now it's starting to get interesting. This is what this kid finds interesting. There's no reason for us to simply assume that a woman called Beatrice doesn't exist. It's what Uncle Rudolph called a devil's proof. <coughs> None of us knew that a woman called herself Beatrice existed. What's that? <laughs> but that's not the same as proving that Beatrice doesn't exist. <coughs> Dr. Nanjo, you've been friends with Grandfather a long time, right? Um, at one point during the family conference, I was questioned quite thoroughly by Krauss-san and the others. They wanted to know if, long ago, Kinzo-san might have had a mistress called Beatrice, and an illegitimate child with her. I get it. Our parents have their heads full with the inheritance problem. So of course, if the daughter of a mistress like that showed up, it'd be troublesome for them. Kuro-san and the rest probably asked Genji-san about it first. However, Genji-san is an aide who swore loyalty to Kinzo-san, and is probably a friend more trusted by Kinzo-san than myself. I doubt he told them anything. So next, they went to ask me, as an old friend of his. And? Did Grandfather have a lover called Beatrice, Dr. Nanjo? He did. No, I have never met her. However, I've heard from Kinzo san that he had a relationship with a woman like that. He said she passed away a very long time ago. She's dead. So did the two of them have a kid? That I do not know. But Kinzo san always says that reviving Beatrice is the goal of his research. Usually, if one loses a miracle, but has a child a, mir a mystery. <laughs> I've got one in the Kinzo mentality. Opposite of a miracle. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Usually, if one loses a mistress but has a child left behind to remember them by, they pour all of their love onto that child. Therefore, we naturally assumed that there was no such child between Kinzo-san and Beatrice. I mean, he didn't love his own kid. Men only want one thing. <laughs> Beato. Beato Riche. Hmm? Hmm? So that leaves us with another... Mm -hmm. It's my turn, sir. Devil's proof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's impossible to prove that a child between him and his mistress didn't exist. So now that this child has actually appeared, we have to assume that she did exist, after all. Wait, what's the devil's proof again? 
Can someone give me a quick rundown of Devil's Proof? What? Glad you asked. You don't quite That's a bit of a rush art. You don't quite get it. It's more realistic than somebody caught wind of the trouble with the Ushiromiya family inheritance. Knew about grandfather's relationships with a mistress long ago. And impersonated her trying to take a slice of the inheritance for themselves. Sure, that is realistic. But we can't deny the possibility that she really is an old legitimate child. One who lived in isolation, forgotten by grandfather, and who's returned for revenge, right? Revenge? <laughs> what do you mean? Ah, uh, sorry, sorry. Guys just like to dramatize stuff to make it sound interesting. I've seen too many weird dramas. <laughs> too many weird notions. Uh-huh. <laughs> Normally, that might have come off as a light joke, but the joke had landed after an uninvited mystery guest calling herself Beatrice had marched in on the day of the family conference with a bloody argument that the inheritance had become took center stage. There's no way Battler's joke would be welcomed with laughter. So it was a really big help, and Nanjo laughed brightly to calm everyone down. <laughs> I see, I see. That does sound quite intriguing. I would love to read a novel with a plot like that. Or just a book about chess, you know how that is. Well, I don't think it could actually work. After all, right now, on this island, there's only one, two, three... Is he counting on his fucking fingers or something? <laughs> a full 18 people, right? Yeah, with all 18 of his fingers. <laughs> I mean, like, he's like, oh, no, <laughs> If anyone tries to do something weird, they'll immediately get caught. And thanks to that typhoon, they can't even leave the island. In other words, if he tried to commit some crazy crime, he'd be screwed. I agree. In a dead end, without any way to escape, and in a situation where everyone's really suspicious of her, I seriously doubt she could pull off a terrifying... In revenge drama like that. Probably not. In that case, it would be more realistic if she had come here in secret, without making her presence known. I simply cannot imagine someone appearing openly to take revenge outside of some historical drama. Well, who knows right. Revenge is based on emotion, not logic. If you've got someone willing to go down along with their opponent, they might not be afraid of anything. Not even the police, or large numbers of people. It's okay, Jessica Chan. None of the dist- disturbing things we're imagining will happen. Of course not. words. <laughs> Knock on wood. I like the battle royale between our parents over the inheritance isn't disturbing. <laughs> will we drop it, boys? Uh, that's right. Uh, Dad and Uncle Rudolph are pretty tough, and Aunt Ava's even trained in the martial arts. We'll be fine. Be martial arts. Ava's Hokage, don't you Yeah. Know? Believe it. Jessica didn't say it out loud, but she's Believe vaguely noticed that her own father stood in opposition to all the other siblings on the inheritance issue. They usually played nice in front of the children, but when that pretense was lifted, like it had been at dinner, the result would be a tum- tumultuous uproar. After realizing this, it was only natural for Jessica to be frightened at the thought that her parents might get caught up in some kind of trouble and become human sacrifices for something terrifying. She would never happen. Seriously. <clears throat> George Anakin's right. Honestly. Nothing's gonna happen. Even if she pretends she's a witch. What can a single human woman who can't even use magic do? All dead. <laughs> oh, <man>. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sudden creepy laugh made all of them jump. And when they realized the strange laugh was coming from Maria, they were shocked again. I see. So that's how you see it, Battler. What is? What is? Don't laugh what all is? creepy like that. What it is? You accept Beatrice's existence for now. At least you accept her as the 19th person and as a guest. But that's all, right? You don't accept the 19th person. Beatrice is a witch, right? Huh? All the crazy things to say. Of course that's what I think. Witches couldn't possibly exist. The only possibility is that she's a human woman claiming to be a witch. <laughs> hmm. Isn't that odd, Battler? That's a... I don't, I don't want to fucking get up. That's a devil's proof, isn't it? Devil's proof. Witches don't exist. But just because you've never met a witch, that doesn't mean you've proven that witches don't exist, right? That's right. 
You're not wrong there. I can't prove that witches don't exist. However, even if I can't prove it, I can claim it. I claim that witches don't exist. Damn. Why? How can you claim that witches don't exist, even though you can't prove it? Because things like that don't exist. <laughs> oh my fucking god. <laughs> so that's... what the fuck? QED? I, I can't even read that. QED. That's QED. QED. <clears throat> you finished your proof without any evidence or, or basis. Now it's a typical case of the ignorant willfully ignoring the shallowness of their own knowledge. A reckless suspension of thought. That's a good definition of battler. <laughs> <laughs> ignorant ignoring their own, like, shallowness of their own knowledge. Then there's only one way to resolve this, Maria. The witch's side needs to show some proof themselves. It's a doubtful's proof again. I <laughs> like <laughs> the fact that he said it again, like kind of like stunned, stunned me. <laughs> if you bring me a devil, we can end this right now. In this case, we can just get this woman calling herself Beatrice to display some wonderful, magnificent magic, like the twinkling stars. All she has to do is show us something that's impossible for humans, right? Come now, you two. Please, settle down. Kumasawa noticed that the atmosphere between them was getting worse and tried to calm them. It seemed as though Battler quickly realized that he wasn't acting like an adult. But Maria's, but Maria's expression didn't lose him. As she laughed creepily, she kept staring at Battler. You quit it too, Maria. Let's get back in a good mood, okay? <laughs> If that's what you want, right. Beatrice will definitely show you something impossible for humans. When she does, you'll believe too, okay? You'll believe in Beatrice. Sure. She lets me have a look, I'll believe. It's a chess debate between the witch and you, Battler. If you get checkmated, you'll believe in the witch. Ooh, I like the way you put that. The witch shows her magic. My king is put in the check. I quibble, saying it'd be impossible to reproduce that feat using measures even a human could take, and my king, king escapes. Failing to do that would be checkmate, so that's a pretty good analogy. Battler, in chess, you and your opponent have pieces that move in the same way, so you can predict your opponent's moves. But you know what? What you aren't expecting is that your opponent's pieces might be able to move in ways far stranger than yours. You simply assumed that, since witches must not exist, the movements of Beatrice's pieces will obviously be the same as your own. But you know what? Sorry, Battler, but your chess partner isn't human. She's a witch. She can move her pieces in ways that humans can't. Right now, your understanding is flawed. Battler, you like Aunt Curie's chessboard thinking, right? Yeah. I like that style of thinking where you stand in your opponent's shoes. And that's why you'll get stuck. Even though your opponent is a witch, you won't accept it. So you can't understand the moves a witch might make, and your chessboard thinking won't work. Your knowledge of your opponent is mistaken. The very first premise of chessboard thinking is broken down. Ah. So that's your game. You cannot win in chess against a witch. <laughs> kind of hard to sustain that Maria voice. I was about to say, you okay? Yeah, you've been you talking to yourself for like the last five minutes. <sighs> oh, okay. Hmm? Never mind, never mind. <sighs> Where's our sexy lady at? Big titty mate. <sighs> Come on, put on your best sexy Shh, lady. Let's do this, I. Right? <laughs> 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 I want to get the show with. I want to go to bed. Sure thing, man. I don't know what happened after that. The servants were strictly ordered not to approach the dining room. Naturally, she'd be with them. I see. So, Shannon, have you ever met this person called Beatrice before? Uh, I don't know. That was a slightly odd way to say it. It didn't quite sound as if she was saying her memory was hazy. For us servants, Beatrice Sama is a is the second master of this mansion. Some people say we've spread that rumor because of the master's influence. But even when I just started working here, the story of Beatrice-sama was already being whispered of. I've heard about it before. 
If you don't show her respect, you'll get cursed. And at least one servant actually did meet that. Did meet with an accident, right? Yes. But it's true that some people believed more than others. I, uh, believe respect for that sort of thing shouldn't be forgotten, so I have never doubted that she exists. I vaguely believe that, uh, um, shadowy being called the Golden Witch existed. And then that witch who exists, who existence was so shadowy and obscure, actually showed herself, entered openly through the entrance hall. Is that what happened? I don't know. I don't know anything. When you brought her dinner, did you talk about anything? No, nothing. I see. Still, a wish that eats food somehow doesn't sound so realistic. Maybe, after all, it's just someone who knows about the witch legend on this island. Someone who's talking, who's taken on Beatrice's name. I think you've probably come to respect Beatrice and think of her as something like a guardian god of the mansion. So when a person appeared actually going by the name, maybe you were a little disturbed. That's right. I guess that must be the case. George was slightly at a loss at what to do about Shannon's downcast appearance. Maybe not just Genji, but even the young servants had been very closely questioned as to whether they knew anything about this Beatrice person. Thinking that, he tried to cheer her up somehow. Surely, just like Maria and Jessica, Shannon was unable to fully hide the agitation caused by the sudden visit of this person calling herself the Golden Witch. He'd been so sure that that was the case. You know, because she's a woman. But George... <laughs> Jeez. But George probably had no way of looking into Shannon's heart. Shannon was bitter and sad. The door to the Golden Land would be opened. The witch had definitely told her that. That meant the demise of everything. Even if she accepted the ring from George, they would never be married now. No, in the first place, did furniture like her even have the right to be married? Even if the witch hadn't come to single signal their demise, wasn't their relationship failed to, fated to fail sooner or later? Had she turned her gaze to focus solely on those fun days spent with George, while purposefully closing her eyes to the sad reality? What's wrong? You really haven't looked well for a while now. George, son, what does it mean to be engaged? It's an anime question right there. Such an anime question. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it means making a promise to marry. But I think in this sense it means the same thing as marriage. To be honest, I want to take you home as my wife right away. But right now, I'm in the middle of training. And I'm still a long way from having the capacity of creating my own castle. That's why I want to take you home with me with my head held high, only after I become a full adult. I'm not talking about oh, the I distant think. future. It's probably still yeah, George. It is. Yeah. I'm not talking about the distant future. I just want you to wait a short three years. Is that... Oh, sorry. No, it's fine. It's a very long time to be engaged. Is it? But that doesn't mean I want to lie about my feelings for another three years. I mean, my... I know people are rakish, but yeah, you know, one like, year minimum. I said that, and I was like, yeah, maybe not. So I decided to give you an engagement ring. That might, that might be a shameful reason as a man. Maybe it's, a sh it's shameful to get engaged because I want you to wait, since I can't support my work and a wife at the same time yet. Sorry. But I will, definitely... Thank you very much. I understand that to you, George son. The engagement ring means everything. Something different from one of the many presents you'd give to a lover. Oh, of course it's different. 
An engagement ring isn't a simple accessory. Oh, actually? It's an oath between lovers. A noble promise left in the form of a ring. <laughs> so, if we were to get married right away, it would be completely meaningless, right? Hold up, Shannon. I want to give her a hug. The, Me too. Then it wouldn't be an engagement ring. I'd give it to you as a wedding ring. Either way, I'd still be giving you a ring. So, it's a soul sign. Like saying, this woman is mine. Nobody touch her. N no, uh, that's not what I... <coughs> George knew that he was weak by nature, yeah. <laughs> when he'd been captivated by Shannon and had sworn to become an excellent man, he had also sworn to throw away that weak part of himself. So even if he had to be blunt about it, he chose to answer it a little roughly. He was sure that doing so would bolster and reassure Shannon. Uh, yeah. No. That may be true. Sayo. I want to make you my slave. Slaves? <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. Salt sign, man. Salt sign. This I was really hoping mine. you were just going to say some kinky shit. Instead, you went that route. <laughs> Instead, you went the buying mine. people route. <laughs> that's, what, that's what she said, basically. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, that's true. I want, Sire, I want I'll make you, to, you my I wanna, wife. I want you to own, I want to own you. I, want you I to won't give me. you to anyone else. <laughs> I'll make you mine alone. So no one will lay a hand on you. How romantic. That's what this ring is. <laughs> Without a doubt. Thank you very much, George son. I'm truly happy. We've made turn this relationship into such a meme, actually. <laughs> it's so like wholesome. Like, are you just like reading this? Then, George Sun. It's not a good first experience for Umineko to anyone who's like actually watching this. If it was decided by fate that this engagement ring, that this promise could never be fulfilled, would you still give it to I me? I think it's probably a little late for that if anybody's watched <laughs> this far. Yeah, but yeah. you're in for a ride either way. Shannon tried to ask that, but she swallowed her words. Because George had already spoken the answer. George had said it. He had said that to him, an engagement ring was infinitely similar to a wedding ring. Therefore, accepting George's ring had a significance far more sacred than a promise to marry. So, I'll stop calling this an engagement ring. From now on, this isn't an engagement. It's a wedding ring. Uh, is that really okay? Is it okay to um, just proclaim that we're married without even God's blessing? God is dead. <laughs> it's enough to tell God, Father, Mother, and Mother about it afterwards. We'll tell them all that we've been... <laughs> Fuck. All that we've been married. No one will be able to undo it. George, son... I'm not saying this because of a momentary emotion. I'm not just looking at how we are now. I'm looking at the you of tomorrow, of the next day. I'm even gazing at you as you'll be in old age, in the future, as I say this. You're always talking about that, George, son. About how you want to enjoy your old age slowly, surrounded by healthy children and grandchildren. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you are. At that. Are you killer, by the way? No. Oh, Jesus. Oof. <laughs> At that time, an older you will be beside me. That is what I expect. No, what I foresee. Yes. Because that day will surely come. Will it surely come? 
Yes. Surely. Definitely. And this ring proves it without a word. Please, show me. Huh? Ah, 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 ah. Here it is. George, thinking he was being told to show her the ring, hurriedly took it out of the ring box. Ah, she wanted that dick. Even though he had practiced so much, he hadn't been able to do it cool. Please Not that George that. does anything cool. <laughs> Shannon wasn't looking at that. Looking at his dick. <laughs> and her straight and direct gaze, gaze were vague tears and a smile. She focused her eyes on George's eyes. No, on someone she could see beyond his eyes. Please. Show me that future. Y yeah, I'll show you. Fuck George. Sure. <laughs> I I promise it. And not just until old age, after we die too. Oof. Even when we become spirits, we'll always, always be together. Damn. Good thing that's not coming anytime soon. <laughs> Thank <laughs> God that. <laughs> Shannon wiped away her tears and took the ring box. Inside was a diamond ring worthy of blessing the two of them. George said a line that he practiced over and over again inside his head. <laughs> I, I want you to put that ring on. Whatever finger you like and, 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 and have that be your answer. Talk ring. <laughs> What did you say? What did you say? Tomorrow morning. <sighs> Shannon smiled, took the ring, and with a completely natural movement, put it on the ring finger of her left hand. It really had looked like such a natural, ordinary movement, and for a while, George was stunned. This is my answer, George's son. Shannon! No, Sayo. Even when we become spirits, we'll always, always be together. George, son. Yo, Sayo. This is so fucking goofy. <laughs> there was no blessing from God, no pastor to witness, nothing. But the two who were married proclaimed it. Two souls were joined here today. Beyond two souls. Fuck off. Oh. We name drop in Dave Cage games tonight. Speaking of David, David Cage games, heavy rain. Uh, there's some pretty heavy rain here. <laughs> Nason, you're a fool. You noticed? <laughs> is that so? Even though your furniture... Even though your furniture... I'm not furniture. Not anymore. Liar! Why are you fooling yourself? Even though you know you can never become human. Even though you know you can't become human unless you go to the Golden Land. Knowing that. Why did you abandon the promise that would let you go there? Oh, right. By accepting the ring, that promise with Beatrice Sama comes to nothing, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm sorry. From now on, I, you, George Sama, the Master, and everyone else are under the same condition. 
Thirteen people will be sacrificed. Only five people will be invited to the Golden Land. And you have rejected one of those places yourself. That's odd. It looks like you're the one with regrets, Kenny Kun. You're the one with regrets, aren't you, Nason? You got engaged, right? Even though you knew it was a fate that would never be fulfilled. Yes. I promised that we would always, always be together for eternity. So you know what? In that instant, our eternity was completed. Even if we become sacrifices, it's already completed. So, it's okay. Canon, you're the one who actually has regrets. We're furniture, right? We'll be freed no matter the result. So, it doesn't matter whether we go to the Golden Land or not. And yet, you're set on going there. You want to become human no matter what, right? Why? Because I want to become human! I've had enough of being furniture. Why? I wanted to fall in love too! Tears were coming from Cannon's eyes. What from his eyes? And he howled! Ow! Fuck off. Fucking <laughs> Teen Wolf Cannon. Jesus. I liked Milady. And after seeing Milady that day, I started liking her even more. And when I heard that Milady also liked me, I was really happy. <laughs> but I'm furniture, and I can't accept Milady's feelings. Get fucked. You're wrong. We may be furniture. We may be less than human. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that we aren't qualified to love. I thought that if these feelings wouldn't ever come to anything, I'd be better off not having them. I just decided that eventually I'd disappear and that it definitely hurt her. No, that's wrong! I was just frightened. I was just afraid, thinking that any love that couldn't be eternal was best avoided. Even though their lives last only a few weeks. Cicadas fall- oh, that's Shannon. Even though lives only last only a few weeks, Cicadas fall in love and then vanish. But you'll never find a cicada that refused to fall in love simply because it ended in a few weeks. Ah! Ah! It seemed that Cannon was still muttering his regrets, but by now it was all jumbled up with his sobs. That witch is detestable! Why did she plant these feelings in me? If only, if only she hadn't pulled that bizarre prank. I wouldn't have paid my lady any notice. Beatrice Sama is... Mm. Beatrice Sama is detestable. No, because he's so good. Right now. Yeah, well, right I, now. Hope, I hope we're almost done with this chapter. <laughs> Beatrice Sama is detestable to make you cry better tears. She played games with your fate, but I don't think things went as the witch expected. After all, knowing love isn't a breath that ties you to life. It's the destination we're supposed to reach on our journey through life. Got him. Damn. Shannon's just about to like smoke yeah. fat blunt and go out being like, well, marry, bitch, try me. Well now, Cannon, that promise you worked so hard for has now come to nothing. <laughs> Very well then. With this, the conditions for all of the pieces are the same. There are 18 pieces. 13 will be offered sacrifices. Who will the five survivors be? Or else, will someone destroy this ceremony? Who? How? <laughs> this isn't a chess problem. It's a game on equal footing. I won't be cornered, be cornering you one-sidedly. You'll be able to frantically escape my advances, Enforce a tie. 
An invalid match. At any rate, I doubt you can manage more than repeating that over and over. And it probably won't be that difficult for you. However, this invalid match will continue forever until it eventually wears down your mind and kills it. That is when you'll accept your defeat and surrender to me. There's a reason I said it was a game on an equal footing. That's because rules for you, my loss have also been established. There's nothing as boring as a game you can't lose, right? As for how to defeat me, that would be the epitaph that stands as an offering to my portrait. It's both the way to open the door to the Golden Land and the key to destroying my ceremony. I'll try to complete the, cer complete the ceremony in accordance with the epitaph. You'll try to solve the riddle of the epitaph, destroy the ceremony, and overthrow me! Solve the riddle hidden in the epitaph and expose the location of the vast sum of gold I gave Kinzo! What result will this game show us? I'm expecting a good fight, okay? Entertain me, Ishromia Battler! I don't want it. <laughs> Good fucking man! Oh god, actually? Okay, real shit. Wait, where are we? I have no objections. Not that he and I acknowledge it. <sighs> I can't believe it. I don't want to. But this is the truth, isn't it? Not to he. Choose your words more carefully. She's this family's most honored guest. I I also acknowledge it. Can't argue back. Yes. I acknowledge it. I have absolutely no complaints. I can't believe you actually you have my honest respect. I can't believe I respect you, Rosa. She's not Rosa. I can't believe I respect you, Kraus! Oh. They're talking to someone. Oh my god, whoever the fuck you are, I respect you. <laughs> Me too. Incredible. I genuinely respect you. So I have to acknowledge it. I acknowledge it too. I still can't believe it. Still, what can I do? You proven devils! It's your victory. <laughs> the devil's proof! The devil's proof! God. Was once a convenient excuse you used to deal with unprovable facts. But now it's become your mortal enemy, has it not? Don't torture me, mighty witch. I've already acknowledged you. I resign. Curie. Curie? Do you still have objections? I must have everyone in agreement. If you alone will not acknowledge my existence. As the witch laughed boldly, the siblings started to be <laughs> frantic. They were afraid of displeasing the witch. Curie lightly closed her eyes and, after keeping silent for a while, opened her mouth. My apologies. I resign. Only Kyrie had faced the witch with stern eyes until the end. However, this had only resulted in her refusing to accept the truth for a short time. The truth, the being that was before her eyes, couldn't be denied. Devils had already been proven. I also acknowledge it. You are Beatrice, the Ushiromia family alchemist, and the user of great magic. I must acknowledge the fact that you are a witch.
<clears throat> Quick, everyone snap to exclude Scott. Teams are screaming when you did that. Mm -hmm. I just raised my arms to beckon forth the new day. Oh, okay. We're ending, I guess. Yeah, you didn't know? I mean, yeah, I did. But, like, it was taking a sweet time. So it was oh, yeah. everyone before they all start dying? Uh, but it's, it's like in, they did this in episode one as well, where they sort of, at the end of the first day, it showed everyone's location. Show him the fucking hallway. Go to the kitchen. He's in the uh, like servant's bathroom. Yeah. Go to look so happy. He would be in the kitchen though. And then freaking Genji in the head in the head office. Where's the sleep? What this? Commons. She's. They're all in the guest uh, house. Everyone else has a pretty chill expression, and then she just like screams. <laughs> He's having a good time. He's still holed up in his fucking room. Somehow still alive. Beatrice is in her room. So they call this episode two Devil's Proof. Um, <laughs> yeah. It is Turn of the Golden <clears throat> Witch, my friend. We can call it the Devil's Proof. Yeah. Turn of the Devil's Proof. Oh, time. Hey. Uh, I'm nervous. I mean, we. I know. Uh, I know what time it's going to be, but it still makes me like very anxious. Yeah. Well, what? So it's over. It's only episode two, and we're barely getting to the midnight. Tick, 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 tick. Daytime. Six a.m. Shit's happening next episode. Wait, what? Six a.m. Six a.m. Yeah, but it's it's it is now. Oh yeah, right, 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 right. I forgot that she kills him over the course of days, not all in one night.